For the News and Observer, I'm Don Vaughn, your Capitol Bureau Chief and host of Under the Dome. August arrives on Tuesday, so this week of July 31st into August, and there still isn't a state budget. But there's still NC poll news looking ahead to the 2024 election. But there are other elections here too in the actual year that we're in, 2023, municipal ones. So today for our first segment, I have two of our local government reporters here, Kristen Johnson, who covers Cary in Western Wake County. Kristen, thanks for being on. Thank you. And Mary Helen Moore, who covers Durham. Uh, after the break, we'll come back with two members of our state politics team this summer. But first, let's get into local gov. Uh, Mary Helen, thanks for being on. Uh, we talked about Durham politics. If you're playing, Don mentions it on the podcast Bingo about Durham. That, that does come up a lot and more recently because State Senator Mike Woodard is running for mayor, but he's not the only one running for mayor. And there's a whole lot of drama and other things and very important serious issues going on in Durham. Uh, Kristen is covering uh, Cary, other races in Western Wake, Morrisville, Holly Springs, Apex, and Fruquay Verena, um, which it, we've got a lot of different things to talk about. Kristen, if you can start on kind of where are we on mayors that are running again or aren't and how things are shaping up. Sure. So there are uh, Cary, Apex, um, Fuquay, Verena. There's a lot of towns, so bear with me. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are all running again for re-election, but they're running unopposed. So they're not really uh, contentious races with the mayors, but there are a lot of candidates for town councils for all five towns uh, in western and southern Wake. And there are some ones to watch um, and carry. Um, the mayor is up for re-election in one at-large seat, Districts B and D. And for District D, um, two candidates are running. Ryan Eads is the incumbent who was appointed last year after mm -hmm. Councilwoman, former Councilwoman Yalu um, left for State House. So he's running to keep his seat, but he's got two opponents. I have them all on my little list. Uh, he is running against Sarika Bonsall. She ran, she made it to the final two with Ryan last year for uh, the appointment for District D. Um, and she, if elected, she would be the first Indian American woman on the town council. And Rachel Jordan, um, she is a PTA mom, very active in the care community. For District B, Don France is running to keep his seat for, uh, he's also mayor pro tem for Cary. He's got one opponent, Michelle Craig, and Lori Bush is running to keep her seat for at-large. Um, she's one of the at-large members with Carissa Johnson. Um, other than that, uh, Holly Springs is another one that I was pretty interested in because one of the candidates for uh, the at-large seat is non-binary. And if you know Holly Springs, there was a lot going on with mm -hmm. the non-discrimination ordinance last year and just recently the mayor uh, writing the proclamation with no mention of LGBTQ people. Um, so there was a lot of drama with that. And Jack Turnwald, um, their pronouns are they, them. They are running for one of the seats. Um, and it's been pretty interesting to watch because she, sorry, forgive me they mm -hmm. have been very outspoken about the lgbtq community in holly springs um and her rep their representation would be very important for the town so. how much do you think this will come up in um as people talk about the um, campaign is it just something that that is there in a representation way is it something that'll come up i don't know if they'll have you know local forum candidate forums or debates or anything they should there should be a lot of town hall meetings about uh the campaign the election coming up uh, specifically about the issue of the lgbtq community since it's been such a hot topic in holly springs um other issues like uh, housing affordable uh, affordability the environment um a lot of development in western and southern wake county has been uh a concern for a lot of people who've been there. They don't really want to see their small town charm uh, be lost in a lot of the development. So um, it, it'll be interesting to kind of see what each candidate has uh, on the, each position. So um, Development in Durham has like been an issue in past campaigns. I don't know if it is as much this time. What do you see before we get into everyone who's running, uh, Mary Helen, what do you see as far as being like the 
top of mind for the big issues for Durham voters or just what everybody is talking about, regardless of who ends up on council? Um, In this election, as far as I can see, it's the biggest divider on the current city council as far as um, just ideological. There's like a 4-3 split right now, and the four are often approving the developments. The current mayor is on the three who they typically vote against them, especially in Southeast Durham, closest to Wake County, mm-hmm. which is really kind of where a lot of the um, a lot of the housing especially is concentrated right now. Um, so yeah, development is a huge uh, part of this campaign. There's also a lot of people talking about just biking infrastructure, which is part of development, right? Like the roads are crowded, um, transit is um, on the top of a lot of people's minds right now. And then of course, um, crime is often um, top of mind for a lot of Durham voters as well. With development, are you talking about closer to the, I guess, sort of the Briar Creek, like airport area? Right, like- exactly. Southeast Durham, like Leesville Road area kind of, um, very close to Briar Creek, and so that's why a lot of the um, people want to live down there. It's close to Wake County, it's close to Briar Creek where you can shop, and it's close to the airport too. So basically, where like you know a couple of your yeah. uh, municipalities intersect too exactly. in that area. Yeah. Do you guys see that as being um, just overall triangle wise right now, like the biggest area of growth, or things coming up at council meetings where there are rezonings or discussions or anything like that close to that or not? For me, yes. Um, There's a couple big buildings going up in downtown, but a lot of that doesn't come to city council because you can pretty much do whatever you want in downtown Durham. They really encourage you to just kind of, you know, build build tall and build big. But um, yeah, for me, for it's that area. What about you? It's in Western Wake County, Cary specifically. There's the concern that they're running out of land to develop, so they're trying to find um, smaller pockets of unincorporated little areas where they can develop like um, recently a daycare they just annexed uh, part of a a green level church road for the future of a daycare so little things like that um, and carry that they're really trying to put emphasis on but there's also like the town downtown areas for a lot of the towns they're they've got plans to revamp the older parts of town so as new residents come in they're trying to mix like the old and the new so they're not as uh there isn't a big push for like big tall buildings but you could see some of that in the future especially like in the more southern towns like holly springs and few wave arena so okay so, um mary helen so durham's been growing a lot too and you know there we've got new voters there um some of them know you know the uh people that are already on council um, or people that were in council and want to come back like woodard running for mayor who we already mentioned so what's at play with all like the new durham old durham old meaning people that have been around longer um and these races so if you want to give us the rundown of who's running and then also all this stuff that's been going on lately and so we have a race for mayor that's got eight people in it and so um we'll go to a primary that'll narrow that down to two people and the biggest name there's three current elected officials who are running. One is our state senator for a long time, Mike Woodard, who was on the town uh, or on the city council for for a long time. And um, we have Leonardo Williams, who's a brand new city council member, um, but he's been involved in Durham for a for a while. He was a teacher. He's a business owner, and he's got a lot of support, including that of um, our previous mayor before. Elaine O'Neill took office, Steve Shul. So there was a um, a dinner that was kind of like I heard a soft launch for Leonardo um, at Steve Shul's house recently. So um, it's really interesting to see kind of where um, where people are aligning themselves. Um, we also have another city council member running, who's Deidreana Freeman. She's a close ally of the mayor's. She's had a really tough year. Um, you know, uh, there were there's there was a contentious a, <laughs> council meeting, and yeah, there was a really tough argument that kind of broke out after city hall. Just 
uh, after a city hall meeting and um, just cursing, pushing, and, um, you know, <laughs> so she is running. And yeah. then we have several other people, too. Um, there's actually three Williams in the race, interestingly. <laughs> so Leonardo Williams, we have another guy, Marshall Williams, and Sylvester Williams. The perennial candidate. Wow. So yeah. that's interesting, you know, hope people don't get confused there. <laughs> and then there's a couple other people, Dante Dunstan, who comes to a lot of city council me meetings just to offer his thoughts, and Nick Pettiford, I don't know a lot about him, and then um, C. Burris as well, she's running too. Um, City Council is another really interesting one. We have 12 people in the field already. We're going to narrow it down to six in the primary, and then three people will ultimately be chosen for those seats. There's two incumbents running, Javier Caballero and um, Monique Colsey Hyman. And um, one of the incumbents, Jillian Johnson, decided not to run. So she mm -hmm. is taking a break. Um, but there's some candidates people are really excited about. Nate Baker, he's a city planner. Carl Rist, um, I've seen a lot of his signs up already. Um, Sherry Zan Rosenthal is running. She was in the um, city attorney's office for a long time. She knows Baker's on planning commission, right? He Not is for on, the city, right? On planning commission. Yeah. yeah. Did I say that right. wrong? Thank you. Um, I've seen a lot of excitement around Kalila Karim, who's a progressive. Um, and then we've got uh, a bunch of other names, too. Uh, so it's going to be really, really interesting. I'm so excited to see that the endorsements will start rolling out over the next couple weeks in August. We will start with the um, PA PAC, and then the um, Durham Committee will release theirs next, and then Indie Week in September. So it's going to be a fun yeah. summer. And a lot of the council <laughs> members have already, they've been involved in People's Alliance or Durham Committee on the Affairs of Black People before, as far as their endorsements yes. and those carry a lot of weight in Durham which um, as listeners probably know is very blue uh, but there it's a nonpartisan. There's race, so, so many shades of blue. Yes and very much in Durham. Yeah. It is nonpartisan. I think the the PACs are gonna have really tough decisions yeah. to make because it's not like there's one or two progressives. There's a lot of them and so mm -hmm. it's gonna be really interesting to see kind of how things shake out. I'm excited. Okay. This is my first election that I'm covering in Durham. <laughs> I'm excited for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, we're going to um, take a break soon. Mary Helen Moore, who covers Durham. Not to be confused with Mary Helen Jones, the <laughs> Spectrum <laughs> Capital reporter. There's two Mary Helens in the triangle that cover <laughs> politics. They're both great people. So. Um, and Kristen Johnson, who covers Cary and the rest of Western Wake County. I'm so glad that you've been on. Uh, we're going to, this segment's going to run a little bit longer um, so we can include you your headliners of the week because when we come back our two summer politics interns are going to be on so I'll save my headliner of the week until then but I wanted to hear quickly from each of you who or what is your headliner of the week Kristen no, you go first. my headliner of the week is Barbie making 500 million dollars in its first week um, I went to go see it last weekend the day that it came um, into theaters and at the Paragon Theater in Fenton because it's very fancy. I don't know if you've been there yet, but uh, the movie theater there is amazing. But the movie I thought was interesting because it was so layered with like feminism and fun. Um, Ryan Gosling did a really good job, and and Greta Gerwig. Um, I know she directed Lady Bird, so I I'm not familiar with her work, but Barbie um, I thought was one of her really good ones. So. Go see it if you haven't. I'm going to see it this weekend yeah. in Indiana Jones, too, because I'm doing um, Adventure Barbie movie weekend. So, <laughs> Mary Helen, who or what is your headliner of the week? Okay, my headliner of the week is our current mayor of Durham, um, Elaine O'Neill. She is going on national TV to participate in a town hall on crime Monday night. So it's going to be on News Nation. She's getting interviewed by Chris Cuomo, taking questions. So we don't hear from her a lot. So I'm really excited to... Um, see what she has to say and then also mini headliner so all of durham's i mean all of north carolina's local elections happen on the same schedule so mini shout out to my mother who lives in the town of red oak and who is running for the town council yeah. all right red oak listeners <laughs> we actually have statewide listeners so you might hear from somebody in uh in red oak so as because y'all's elections uh, all the municipal elections other than city of raleigh who moved to next year 
here, but uh, there is uh, someone already declared running for council in that race. But we'll get to Raleigh another time. Hopefully we can talk more about Durham on another one and more about Cary and Holly Springs and Morrisville and everything. I appreciate you guys being here. When we, um, when we come back, we'll have Micaiah Seminera and Jasper Liu. Thanks for listening and we'll be back with more. You're listening to Under the Dome. I'm Capitol Bureau Chief Don Vaughn for the News and Observer. We started off with a look at some local races and what's at play with local government reporters Mary Helen Moore and Kristen Johnson. And now we're back to talk state government with Micaiah Seminera, NNO summer politics intern who you've heard before, and our NC insider, NNO summer intern Jasper Liu. Micaiah just graduated from the University of Florida and Jasper is a rising junior at Duke. So Jasper, let's start with you about a story that you've been working on that uh, by the time people are listening to this on Monday or Tuesday, it will probably already be published. You can read it at newsobserver.com. Anyway, it's about uh, one of the reasons why there haven't been no vote sessions lately is some of the Republican House members were at the ALEC convention, which is the American Legislative Exchange Council. So what did you learn about ALEC? What should people know that you know aren't already part of it? Yeah, so right now, as we're filming this, um, the legislators right now are at the 50th annual meeting of ALEC. And, and what ALEC is, it's a, it's a group of conservative state lawmakers um, that come together from all different states and really meet about different uh, policy issues, primarily around economic and business issues. Um, but uh, they've come up in the past and have faced a lot of criticism for a lot of the corporate funding that they take on. Um, because how, how ALEC works is they're basically divided into task forces on different issues like energy, um, education, or, or other, other sectors. Um, and, and they come together with different state lawmakers and meet with also representatives of private industries and, and, and other businesses that might have a stake in those fields. And, and they vote on these things called model bills. And these are basically uh, just a, a sample text of you know what a bill might look like that can be introduced into various state houses. So, so my article really looked at um, what influence ALEC plays in North Carolina and some of the recent legislation. Um, for example, uh, this session there was a bill that passed that basically limited the treasurer's ability to um, invest in certain things based on ESG factors, which is uh, economic, social, and governance uh, mm -hmm. factors. Um, and that bill was, uh, a lot of the meat of that bill was taken straight from ALEC, uh, copy-pasted. And there's been a lot of legislation in the past that also um, are just straight copy-pasted from ALEC. So a lot of the controversy relies around, hey, are we giving too much say to these bills and it's specific wording to these corporations? Mm -hmm. Or is this kind of just like an innocent uh, exchange of ideas between between lawmakers uh, for different states? Okay. Uh, so we'll look at what um, what kind of influence that's going to have this, um, if we see any final things in the budget or upcoming sessions. Um, Micaiah, from, from living in Florida, there's a lot of some crossover with Florida and North Carolina on certain yes. things, other, other ones not. What have you seen? Uh, with covering the North Carolina legislature this summer that is similar to Florida or significantly different? So I think the thing that stands out to me is this constant override process because in Florida we have the Republican supermajority, um, but the difference is we have a Republican governor, Ron DeSantis, who's also running for president. Um, and, you know, he kind of just gets what he wants because the legislature in Florida will kind of pass you know, whatever he wants and he'll sign it and it'll go into law and it's more of having to deal with those court challenges. But here, you know, there's always that toss up of, you know, will Governor Cooper veto something and then it gets sent back. So just this kind of back and forth process is definitely something new to me. Um, the higher ed system in North Carolina um, and Florida are very similar, I think. Um, I'm actually working on a project with um, our higher education reporter, Corey Dean, um, looking at the political developments in both North Carolina and Florida's higher education system, looking at political influence, faculty reactions and opinions on these things. Um, there's the School of Civic Life at UNC um, that mirrors a lot of things in Florida, um, specifically at UF, having a Hamilton Center, which kind of has the same, you know, tone to it of having this public discourse and wanting to have all this diversity of thought. So there's a lot of parallels um, in that respect. Um, it's definitely very interesting in both places, I would say. <laughs> 
All right. Um, so we'll move on to our headliners of the week. And also thank you both for um, being on again. And you are, I guess, in the last week or two of your internship. So yeah. like hopefully, mm-hmm. yep. um, hopefully on the podcast again before you um, before you finish up. So, Makaya, your headliner, I believe, is a second vote since we had a quick headliner uh, with the first segment. So I think this is probably going to win headliner, at least in some people's minds. So uh, tell me about your headliner. Yeah, I don't think I would be, you know, representing myself as a girl and woman properly if I didn't put in my vote for Barbie this week. Um, I saw it earlier this week and it was fantastic. But um, you know, goes without saying that the women of that movie, all of the Barbies, fantastic. Uh, but I did want to give a special shout out to the Kens. Um, the musical number in the movie that the Kens do is fantastic. I loved seeing it. Ryan Gosling, very funny. Didn't know he had that in him, so that was good to see. Um, I want to see more more Kens out there too. It's fantastic. <laughs> All right. Uh, my headliner is um, also about characters. Uh, as Galaxy Con was in downtown Raleigh this past week, as we recorded on Friday, there are, you know are hundreds, probably thousands of people here for that event. And there's a lot of traffic downtown, but that just means it's actually a thriving downtown. <laughs> and sometimes you should like wait a block or two as cars move um, going to an event. And when I was leaving the newsroom on Thursday night, uh, the I don't know is on uh, City Plaza. And, and when I circle out of out of downtown, um, passing Red Hat Amphitheater, and I heard, my name's Lupe Fiasco. And like, as like all the Galaxy Con people were walking around, and then it was like sunset. And I was like, this is just a really great city that, um, that we're privileged to, to work in and live in. I live here too, just yeah. not downtown. So <laughs> anyway, um, downtown Raleigh being, um, pretty active again, which is nice to see after some recent downturn. So that's my headliner. Jasper, what's your headliner of the week? So my headliner is about Medicaid. It's been a very long wait for a lot of people in the state, but it seems like uh, Medicaid is actually coming around the corner. And it's dependent on uh, the General Assembly passing a budget uh, next month, so we'll see if that actually happens. But if they do, there is a start date uh, announced for October 1st. So that's exciting for a lot of um, people that will be covered by the expansion. I think some people thought, because, you know, NCDHHS is part of uh, Democratic uh, Governor Roy Cooper's administration when they put out the announcement this past week that they were moving ahead. And it, part of it was putting pressure on the General Assembly exactly. to just get your get yourself together here and, and pass a budget or separate it from the budget. And Speaker Moore told reporters, again, there have been no votes weeks, but the the leadership has been around the building and Moore said that he's he's good with Secretary Kinsley um, going ahead with that, assuming again that the budget will be passed by September 1st. So as you all are listening to this, it's another slow week probably at the legislature because no votes are planned. Everyone is still on vacation or doing other things. But Berger and Moore have been talking and trying to work out a budget deal. One thing they're not gonna do is run a separate bill with Medicaid expansion, Moore said. So that's probably not gonna happen. But are they actually gonna pass a budget in mid-August? Maybe. Guess we'll see. Yeah, exactly. I guess we'll see our perennial, like, North Carolina (laughs) politics comment. So, all right. um, Jasper Lou, Micaiah Seminara, and I'm Don Vaughn uh, for the News and Observer. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.